I was Dr. Chapin's research coordinator. I guess in a strange way I still am. We're continuing his work. Slowing down without him, of course. And you worked with him on tinnitus? For about a year. Very promising. We actually got started with a grant from NASA to create silence. I suppose that's not as simple as it sounds. So to speak. No. Even midnight in a graveyard isn't actually quiet. It's all relative. You might hear crickets, but not a distant airplane. Certain sounds cancel others out. And this works on tinnitus better than white noise? Oh, yeah. Much better. Completely. There, now, tell me what you hear. Kind of a, a hum. No, nothing. It's a double check. <laughs> Nothing's coming out. Yeah, something's wrong with my voice. That's amazing. You completely neutralized it. Impressive, isn't it? Your voice was totally gone. No, no, not gone. I, I took it. I made it inaudible. It's called phase cancellation. We measure the frequency and overtones of your voice and then generate the exact sounds to cancel them out. You see why the top security has huge military capabilities. Stealth technology, submarines. What is this symbol? Phase zero. It's a symbol we use for maximum quiet. We'd also like to see Dr. Chapin's office. Is that around somewhere? Oh, uh, sure. Well, follow me. <clears throat> This is his office? But I thought that he owned the lab. He did. He used to have a big corner office upstairs. I never understood why he wanted to move here, but he insisted emphatically just before he disappeared. Well, holler if you need anything, okay? Thanks. Thanks. Well, we have files, 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 desk stuff. Why would a guy who rates an office upstairs want to be down here? Stapler, salt substitute, pills. What kind of pills? Well, he's got vitamin C, some aspirin, vitamin E. He had our problem. He's alive. Who is? Chapin. He had a bad heart, but he's not dead. I see where you're going with this. The stairs. You didn't want to keep going up and down. Right, and the salt substitute, the vitamins, the aspirin. If you had a heart problem, we'd have found medical records. His wife would have known something about it. She never said anything. She sure as hell would have. And why keep it a secret? Keep those fat federal grants rolling in. Well, then where is he? It's been two years. I don't know. But he was developing a state-of-the-art treatment for tinnitus. Whoever took him wanted. Excuse me. You've got a phone call on line three. You can take it right there. Alone. Yeah. Think we'd have run a test if we knew he was hanging there? What was the ME's preliminary? Was he killed first? No. He died right here. When's the last time somebody took a look back here, Mr. Escobar? About an hour ago. We had a J-40 scheduled for a compliance burn at noon. That's a 20-minute test at full throttle. Deflectors took care of the blast. It was the sound. That's what killed him? Yes, ma'am. That's what it was. You run a J-40 without baffles, it's not really a sound. It's one long explosion. It was a demonstration. What it's like to live with a sound so monstrous you do anything to stop it. But why kidnap Cronenberg to cheat Chapin's heart and then kill him? Because Cronenberg failed. I mean, if a man is dying and the doctor can't save him, you don't need the doctor anymore.
ignoring the premise that for the last two years, Lawrence Chapin has been a slave, that his captor hears a sound which is so deafening and constant that he or she is convinced that Lawrence Chapin can build a phase zero device to stop it. Chapin's kept in a straitjacket of curare, but his heart is failing. So obviously Cronenberg was kidnapped to help him. We searched the uh, pharmaceutical computer networks and found this. You want to punch that up there? Sure. This is a prescription written by Cronenberg after he disappeared. Okay, let's assume Chapin's still alive. How bad is he? He's got congestive heart failure. Started seeing a specialist in 1994, not Cronenberg. He sure is worried about losing that grant money. You know, with regular treatment, he could live. But he isn't getting any treatment. His heart pumps so slowly that he fills up with fluids. This drug, Lassadrill, is a powerful IV diuretic. It's tricky to use outside of a hospital. So while Chapin was going critical, Cronenberg was in Russia. Pretty bad time. So Cronenberg gets back. Chapin's so ill that short of an intensive care unit, no one can save him. That's the ironic thing. Chapin has always been doomed to fail. I mean, the sound isn't real. So there's no phase zero machine ever built that could stop it. in hindsight, it's clear to see that the writer didn't love him. She needed his help. Only you can give me what I need. Right, to make life worth living, or I can't live without you, things like that. He was a salvation, or at least she thought he was. Mm. 